Now we're going to get L of U of T. So we apply the definition of the Laplace transform. We're integrating from zero to infinity, but we know that U of T has the value one for values of T greater than zero. So basically, we just have e to the power of minus st multiplied by one, which is e to the minus st. So we're just integrating e to the minus st for t equals zero to infinity. That's a straightforward integral. We've seen it before, actually. Um, we can treat minus s as a constant here because we're integrating with respect to time. So when we integrate e to a constant times t, we get back e to the constant times t, but we divide by the constant, which is minus s in this case. Uh, now, for the upper limit of plus infinity, we have to take the limit of this function as t tends towards plus infinity. Since s is a positive number, we know that e to the power of minus st will go to zero. So we're going to get zero for the upper limit, then we have a minus sign, then we plug in the lower limit, which is zero. Well, we get e to the power of zero on top, that's just one. And uh, from this we get plus one over s. Let's look at the decaying exponential function, e to the power of minus at times u of t, where a is positive. So here's the graph of e to the power of minus at. a is a positive constant. When t is zero, this function is actually one. e to the power of naught is one. We can even forget about the u of t because u of t is equal to one here. We're just looking at um, this part of the exponential. Actually, it would continue on, of course, normally, but because because u of t is zero for t less than zero, the exponential function gets cut off for negative values of t. So we're just interested in the causal function. e to the power of minus a t approaches zero as t tends towards plus infinity. That's only true when a is a positive constant. As t tends towards plus infinity, e to the power of a t will go off to plus infinity. So this here will go to zero. So the graph approaches the t-axis asymptotically. So we apply the definition of the Laplace transform. Um, we have to multiply e to the minus st by the function. That is by e to the minus at. u of t is left out here, we don't need it. And then integrate with respect to t from zero to infinity. So uh, multiplying these terms, you just add the powers. t has been factorized out. So it's a straightforward integral. We just have the integral of e to the power of a constant times t. So we get back e to the power of the constant times t, but we divide by the constant. The constant is minus s plus a. And let's look at the upper limit, plus infinity. So we take the limit of this thing as t tends towards plus infinity. Now, since we know that s is positive, and since we're given that a is a positive constant, then it's obvious that s plus a is positive, which means that minus s plus a will be negative. So, because the power is negative, as t tends towards infinity, e to the power of minus s plus a times t will go to zero. So, for the upper limit of infinity, we will get zero, and uh, for the lower limit, we plug zero in for t, we get e to the power of zero on top, which is one. So we get minus, minus, um, we get minus one over minus s plus a which gives us 1 over s plus a. Let's look at the linearity property of the Laplace transformation. So we have two causal functions, f of t and g of t. That means that these functions are zero for negative values of t. c1 and c2 are any two constants. If we take the Laplace transform, we have to multiply, um, well, this linear combination by e to the minus st. But the integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals. And c1 is just a constant. We can pull that outside each integral. But you see we're left with c1 times the Laplace transform of f of t. That's what this integral here is. Similarly over here we have the Laplace transform of g of t. So we can distribute L in through this um, linear combination of functions. Here is a table of Laplace transforms. We've proven uh, numbers two, three, and four. In general, the causal function is small f of t. Its transform is big F of s. So all of these functions on the right-hand side are functions of s, and the functions here are functions of t. 
In this example here, we want to get L of 2 cos t u of t minus 3 t squared u of t. Now here we can use the linearity property of the Laplace transform. The 2 is just a constant. So we can just take that 2 out and get L of cos of t. Now we can look that up in the table here. We will prove this later. Cos a t has Laplace trans transform s over s squared plus a squared. Now in this situation a is actually 1. The number in front of t here is 1. So we plug 1 in for a here. So we get s over s squared plus 1. Now um, the next function is minus 3 t squared. Well we can uh, take out the minus 3 and get l of t squared. So if we go back up here and look up t squared. Well we have to get it from this term here, t to the power of n, replace n with 2. If we do that, we get 2 factorial over s cubed. 2 factorial is just 2. So we get minus 3 times 2 over s cubed. So combining these two f gives us the transform of this function. Let's look at the transform of sine, the, well, hyperbolic sine of a t. That's defined to be half into e to the power of at minus e to the power of minus at. Now here we can use the linearity property. We can get the transforms of each of these functions. We can just take the half out. Now the transform of e to the power of at is actually up here. Um, well, we can forget about the u of t, that's just 1. The thing is here, this is minus, so if we want the transform of e to the power of at, well, we just change this plus a to minus a. So we get 1 over s minus a. Now, I just want to look a bit more closely at L of e to the minus a t and L of e to the plus a t. But let's start with L of e to the minus a t. Now, we saw that when we were doing this integral, we had to take the limit of this as t tends towards plus infinity. But since a is actually positive in this case, because we're dealing with a decaying exponential, e to the minus a t, a has to be positive for it to decay, then we get an exponential term with a negative power. Because s plus a is positive, then obviously minus into s plus a is negative. So that ensures that this term will go to 0 as t tends towards infinity. But in the example we're doing, we have a positive power, L of e to the plus a t. So here's the definition of its Laplace transform. Multiplying these terms gives us this here, which is a little bit different, of course. Um, and we want this to go to 0, as t tends towards plus infinity. So we want minus s plus a to be negative. So if we rearrange this, it means we want minus s to be less than minus a. Changing the signs on both sides and reversing the inequality means we want s to be greater than a. So we need a further condition here, actually, that s is greater than a. Now, a is assumed to be some positive quantity here. Because if it's negative, we don't have any problem. We just have the earlier example. We're just dealing with this example here. If the constant in front of t is negative, then we can write it like this, minus some positive constant. We can write it like this, and we don't have a problem with this. The exponential term will go to 0, as t tends towards plus infinity. So, when we're trying to get L of e to the power of plus a t, um, we can use this result here. We can replace plus a with minus a, but we should keep in mind that s is actually must actually be greater than a. And we're assuming here, of course, that a is positive. Because if it's negative, then um, we have the result of the previous example. So here we go. We just take out a half um, out of the hyperbolic sine function. And uh, we have two Laplace transforms, exponential functions. So here they are. and we can combine them into a single fraction, get a common denominator by multiplying the two denominators together. When we divide s minus a into the common denominator, we get the other denominator, s plus a, which we multiply by 1. So 
on top here we have s plus a and if we take the other denominator s plus a divided into the common de denominator we get s minus a but s minus a is multiplied by minus one so we get minus s plus a so that leads us to plus two a on top these twos cancel and we get a over s squared minus a squared getting the hyperbolic cosine is a very similar calculation the defini definition of the hyperbolic cosine of a t is e to the at plus e to the minus at over 2. So basically we change the minus sign in the hyperbolic sign definition to a plus sign. We just change the minus sign to a plus sign and we have hyperbolic cos. We use the linearity of the Laplace transform and uh, we have a very similar situation. These two fractions have been added together, get the common denominator, just multiply the denominators together. Um, that gives us a difference of two squares actually, s squared minus a squared. Um, in the numerator here we have uh, s plus a times 1 plus s minus a times 1. a's cancel and, and s is add to give 2s. These 2's cancel out. So we end up getting s over s squared minus a squared.